Uh, we understand, you know, you have some insights into the opportunities for foreign companies to do business in the Philippines. I'll ask you straight, are you talking to any direct foreign companies that might be looking to increase their FDI or CapEx or presence footprint in the Philippines, Ernest? Well, actually, we've had significant partnerships with many Chinese companies. And it started off um, back in 2010 when we decided to go with Huawei as one of our main suppliers of equipment. And they continue to do that, um, you know, all these years. Uh, then we followed through with our uh, partnership with um, um, and financial, as you know, and we were able to build Gcash into the number one wallet in the Philippines. And, you know, our meetings were just to update each other on the um, latest developments between us and Gcash, as well as what was going on with Ant. As you know, the Ant and the Alibaba group have been going a lot of, going through a lot of changes, a lot of restructuring, and it was great to reconnect with them as well. Our latest, uh, actually, investor that came into the country uh, was Singapore Telemedia. Um, Singapore Technologies, mm -hmm. you know, SDT, uh, with their GDC data center. So we signed a joint venture agreement with them about a year, year and a half ago uh, to take advantage of uh, the trend um, uh, of Philippines becoming attractive once again uh, as far as data centers are concerned. You know, um, Hong Kong, uh, given the geopolitical situation, um, is not as desirable anymore uh, for hyperscalers, and Singapore has some limitations vis-a-vis uh, -vis capacity. But the Philippines, given its location, um, you know, geography, um, ability to scale in terms of land, um, you know, we're, we're we're now in the throes of building a 124 megawatt facility uh, with ST Telemedia here in the Philippines, and and hopefully we'll have it online early 2025. Um, Ernest, it's Yvonne. I'm just wondering in terms of, mm. you know, it seems like the Philippines is really trying to position itself as sort of this data center hotspot in, in the region now. I'm just wondering in terms of where is the potential in that and what do you think is, is really driving that investment that you're talking about? Well, as I said, you know, uh, location-wise, uh, we are in the middle uh, of Southeast Asia, you know, not far uh, from most uh, capitals um, in the region, in the ASEAN. And that helps in the latency that we can provide in terms of connectivity. There's also been quite a number of announced investments uh, in terms of uh, uh, cables, uh, submarine cables that will be landing into the Philippines. We ourselves at Globe are building two more landing stations on the eastern western side of the Philippines to be able to accommodate uh, these cables to come into the country. So with the added connectivity, with the added data center capacity, uh, we believe that the Philippines okay. uh, will become a great alternative you know, for the many hyperscalers you know, that have to serve uh, the region. You know, we've got a tremendous number of people, uh, population-wise, that, that live in these regions, and they have to be served by the hyperscalers. And the adoption of cloud as well is yeah. growing um, in the region. So we, we think that there's going to be huge demand for data center. And, and how is Globe intending to cater to those hyperscalers yeah. now, Ernest? Yes, the, as I said earlier, uh, we started out by looking for a very capable partner um, in GDC, in, uh, in uh, STT GDC. And, uh, you know, as we, we they share our vision and they share our, the optimism about the market. And so we're building the first of out of four data centers that we will be locating throughout um, the Philippines. Um, primarily, though, in the Metro Manila area, uh, we're building probably what is probably the largest data center, which is in the metro. It's in Quezon City in Fairview, uh, on land that Globe uh, had uh, been using uh, just for some uh, links uh, in, in the past. No? So we hope, like I said, to have this online. Um, it's a top grade data center with four or yeah. five uh, structures uh, in the first quarter of 2025. Um, Ernest, this, here's the AI question. Um, what is your AI strategy and where is it going? And can you give us some examples of how you're using it? Yes, actually, Globe has never been a developer of any deep technology. We're a, I think we're a very good user of technology and applying it to solve problems. Right? So the first of all, we're dabbling into it in terms of our customer care area. Uh, as well as the area. Um, I've seen a very good use case of uh, AI where we are using it for our numerous collection calls. As you know, um, Gcash has now been into consumer lending. And so we do you know, millions, uh, hundreds of thousands and even millions of microloans. And of course, sometimes people um, forget, to, forget to pay, neglect to pay. And so I've seen um, a, an actual uh, collection call 
uh, done through an AI voice uh, machine and it's quite impressive uh, on how it has empathy and it actually interacts uh, almost seamlessly undetectable uh, with the consumer. So that's the first bunch uh, of use cases, mostly with customer care and collections for now. Uh, and it's, it's just also quickly, what about uh, G Cash? What's your vision here? And uh, you know, you sold uh, your uh, uh, two hundred towels or something like that. Uh, you know, do you need more money? And does that mean that G Cash could eventually IPO? And if so, when and where? Mm -hmm. Yes, we, it's just to recall, uh, we raised about 300 million uh, US uh, in October of 2021. Uh, we've had um, the good fortune of turning profitable um, early uh, 2022. And so we have not had a need to raise cash um, you know, during this difficult period. Um, as the company continues to grow in terms of revenues, I think we're growing about 20% year on year in revenues and profitability is also growing in tandem with the revenue. Um, you know, an IPO is, is always a possibility. Um, what we've told the market is that we are getting the company ready. Um, depending on market conditions, we may go uh, for an IPO um, in the next 12 to 24 months. Again, there's really no rush to do it. You know, uh, the company's doing very well. If we need to raise money from a private source or private sources, there's lots of people knocking on our doors who want to get a hold of some of the equity of Gcash, given its growth potential and dominance in the country. And so we're just waiting for the right moment and the right time to do it. Ernest, just circling back, if you don't mind, to the data center, uh, you mentioned that you're looking to get that online 2025. I could be mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, my question is, are you, are you able to do the math on that, what the revenue boost would be to the business? Um, I know that's longer term, but do you have any sort of working assumptions what what kind of boost that will give you on, on the top line, Ernest? Well, we haven't really done, um, it would say, a projection for that out there. No? But what I can say is that our non-telco revenues have been growing uh, very healthily in the last year or so, in quarter on quarter. I think we've grown 50%. Uh, these non-core businesses, I think, hold the key for Globe to maintain the growth that we have uh, been experiencing for the past years. Um, as our telco business matures and plateaus, no? just like most other telcos uh, in the world. Uh, the, the data center just forms one of the components. Um, as you know, uh, we have the fintech business, we have the health tech business, and other startups that we are also incubating at the moment. Uh, Ernest, final question is, uh, you've been partners with Huawei for many years. Just give us an update on, on how that relationship is right now. But speaking of, of course, you and using technology. and. It's been making news recently, this new phone, right? The Mate 60, I believe, that series. Uh, can and should we expect that to be part of you know, a feature, a feature into the handsets that you offer locally in the Philippines, Ernest? You, we've never stopped offering their handsets. Um, you know, we, we've been, um, they've been good partners on, on that side of it as well. Our main partnership, um, just um, to, to be clear, is on the network side. Um, we do use them um, mm. quite a bit. Uh, on majority of our network. I think most of the telcos in the Philippines uh, do the same. But their handsets have yeah. been uh, a very good product in the market. They were at one point in time um, going up to number one status in terms of units sold. Uh, however, the lack of um, the, the Android and the lack of the Google system, uh, Google mobile services into the handset has really derailed um, their, their sales. You know? Uh, that's enabled other makers to now uh, take the number one position. But we continue to di distribute their handsets because uh, the public demands it, our consumers want it, and we believe it's our job to give the consumers what they really want.